which he admitted to illegally removing classified documents from the National Archives. For the 9-11 Commission's counsel, Daniel Marcus, it was no April Fool's. I now understand it's a more serious matter than I first understood. Shredding yes, classified documents. Yes, that's correct, which we did not know at that, uh, uh, in, in the spring or summer of 2004 when we issued our report. Under his plea agreement, Berger would serve no jail time and would only have to pay a $10,000 fine, perform 100 hours of community service, and he'd lose his security clearance, though he can reapply for it in three years. It was a deal that struck many people as extraordinarily lenient. U.S. Magistrate Deborah Robinson was outraged by the plea bargain. She even bumped up the fine to $50,000. But Noel Hillman, then chief of the Justice Department's public integrity section, justified the plea bargain because he said, quote, nothing was lost to the public or the process as a result of Berger's crimes. A congressional investigation would later dismiss Hillman's statement as, quote, incomplete and misleading. Nine months after the Berger plea, President Bush appointed Hillman to the federal district court. We had a lot of questions for the Department of Justice. Why didn't its lawyers inform the 9-11 Commission of the extent of Berger's crimes? Who was calling the shots? Was it the career prosecutors? Or did the Bush administration call DOJ to get them to put a lid on the case? Details of Berger's crimes could have severely undermined the credibility of the 9-11 Commission's investigations. Did that play into how the case was prosecuted? Why did Justice largely take Berger's word for what he had done? Did they investigate whether someone, maybe from the Clinton administration, had pressured Berger into stealing and then destroying those secret files? Mostly, though, we wanted to know why the slap on the wrist for Berger when so many other public officials have gone to jail for arguably lesser crimes. But the Justice Department would not talk to us. There's no way that anybody would get the same deal that he got. I mean, it's just for, for, a, for an offense that was this serious, uh, to have it treated as frivolously as it was treated is really shocking. Andrew McCarthy is a former Justice Department prosecutor who made a name for himself by convicting the first World Trade Center bombers in 1993. I take no joy in saying this because I'm an old Justice Department guy and I admire the Justice Department greatly, uh, but it, it's inexplicable the way this case was handled. How do they handle it? He ends up getting, uh, you know, the sweetheart deal of all time. This is a felony in your mind. Oh, beyond question, and probably more than one. So why does McCarthy think justice went wobbly on Berger? Beats him. Well, we could speculate all day. My point is that the Justice Department actually feeds into the, uh, the frenzy by the fact that they don't tell us enough about the case. We're talking about the former National Security Advisor of the United States of America coming to the National Archives stealing documents. We also know that he is the only person that had access to his original records. I'll spend the rest of my life going to bed at night wondering, did he take more? The American people should go to bed every night wondering if he took more. We'll never know. Only Sandy Berger knows. Coming up, what Sandy Berger could have stolen. Throughout this hour, we've raised a lot of questions that we've not been able to resolve. As you've seen, many people who looked into this case think the official explanation for the Sandy Berger caper just doesn't add up. We've requested interviews from Nancy Smith and members of her staff, but the National Archives turned us down. They say the matter's over. The Department of Justice turned us down, too. We also repeatedly asked Sandy Berger for an interview, but received only a letter from his attorney, Lanny Brewer. Brewer said Berger, quote, made some mistakes in his efforts to prepare thoroughly for the 9-11 Commission and has moved on with his life and his career. Brewer added, quote, it's unfortunate that Fox is rehashing this case. But a U.S. congressman wants answers, too. He says the nation needs them. It baffles me. Why not just close this chapter of history? Republican Congressman Tom Davis of Virginia is dumbfounded by the Sandy Berger case. This will forever taint the 9-11 Commission's final report because we don't know that there could have been missing documents in there that could have been, if not incriminating, could have changed uh, the perspective of that whole commission by, by what might have been taken out of there. Are you convinced that Sandy Berger was acting alone? No, I'm not convinced that he was acting alone. They could have well said, Sandy, do you remember that document way back uh, 
that, that I wrote to you or that so-and-so wrote, uh, we can't get this into the record. This is going to make us look terrible. Until the Democrats took over Congress in January, 